ericlason.com here. How do you do the? And happy Friday. Welcome to another Faith Fueled Friday. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> So excited that you guys are here. I'm super, super, super stoked because today I am doing my 2020 vision board reveal. Mommy, beep, 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 beep. Mommy, I'm look. Mommy. Okay, so let me give you guys a little backstory, okay? I apologize in advance that the kids are here and super loud because today is um, Chinese, well, tomorrow's Chinese New Year, so Arya's out of school um, and they're both sick. So guess who gets to stay home with them? Guess who gets to have them in all of the videos? Guess who gets to get them climbing all over them while they're doing this? This lucky lady right here. All right, Jace, get down. Okay? All right. <laughs> so, um, in talking about today's Faith Field Friday, oh my gosh, seriously, Jace, this is like not cool. I'm turning off Super Y. No. Then sit down and enjoy the show. He loves himself some Super Y. But if you guys remember... 2019's theme was surrender, and surrender I did, and results I got in the most unexpected of ways. This year, my theme is, well, if you guys have been following, you already know what it is, but I'm going to do this drum roll anyway. Jeez, get away from, get away. All right, I guess my cup is a little hint, but if you guys sit down, let me do this, please. <laughs> Enjoy. The theme for 2020 is da -da -da -da, by faith. But if you guys have been following, you guys already know this. Jace, oh my gosh, coughing right in my coffee. You don't want to cover your mouth, son? Nasty. Um, so the theme this year is by faith, and I'm super excited because this was a message that I received in November of 2019. As far as what I was thinking I should concentrate on and I really prayed on it and was really asking for guidance and um, the messages that came up and the Lord gave me confirmation like in so many ways y'all it's crazy when you surrender how he begins to speak to you in ways that are so clear that there is absolutely no room for thinking that it's coincidence so with that said I'm gonna reveal my 2020 vision and it's a big vision, y'all. Y'all know how I like to do my vision board, right? We going for big visions popping over here. And I'm going to give you guys the breakdown. One day, I can't wait till I can write my book. I can't wait till I can write, um, do my show one day. And I can give the full-blown testimony of, like, all the intricacies and, like, God bringing me to where I'm supposed to be. But it's so bomb that, that <laughs> that's the theme. Because I've received it in, in confirmation in a lot of ways, too. Jace, Okay. So while I have Jace my backpack on, I'm going to start to reveal the vision breakdown. So um, first off, we have the cover, which uh, is three circles. Last year, I decided that I wanted to do a magazine cutout. But this year, and just thinking about all of the ways that things have really been working out and really focusing on myself, um, not as a person, but like how I want God to use me this year, I decided that I, I want to create the life that I want to live as I have been doing in purpose, in faith, and in passion. But also I'm recognizing that the things of the magazines are things that we shouldn't aspire to because we're blessed to have the life that we live. And we have a lot of picture perfect moments every single day if we really take the time to consider it. <coughs> Excuse me, kids got me sick. So I decided this year to use some of the some of my highlights from 2019 and just thinking about all the ways that the Lord showed up last week last year and all the ways that I plan on asking him to help me level up those awesome experiences. So these are three and I put them in three colors and three circles because circles are my favorite shape, but in thinking about the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So like being bold joy in Jesus and Jesus's presence and the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongue and prophecy and all the other great stuff. So that's what that is. And then if you open it up, you see my health and wellness section. The next page, you see my family section and my family goals um, as far as my relationship with my husband and my children. Um, and then lastly, we have my Go Ham page. This is the page where I basically lay out what I want my home life to be like as far as my self-care and wellness, what I want my business life to be like as far as building and aspirations and um, really just trying to really sit in my purpose and make sure that I'm doing things every single day to stay aligned with what that purpose is. So 
I'm gonna give you the full blown version of the breakdown. So over here, I hope you guys can see this. It's really weird the way I have it set up. But um, over here, I have my health and well. No, this is my spiritual wellness page, and this is my <coughs> excuse me, my physical wellness page. Um, but although this year I kind of have them all mixed up. So I have the healthy eating. Oh, hey, Lauren. How are you? Um, I'm all late. <laughs> so over here, I have the healthy eating because I really, the past couple of years, I've been trying to get back to plant-based eating um, or plant-based living or well, vegetarianism. But I would really like to have a completely plant-based diet. So um, I found a way to incorporate that into it. Um, but just he eating healthy in general. Um, but what I really recognized, and this is going to be such a stretch for me this year and just trying to promote my wellness, is that I need to get more sleep, y'all. Like, <laughs> I do so much on a regular basis, and because I am a stay-at-home mom and I basically have kids with me all the time, I don't have time to work as much during the day without distractions, and I'm a night owl. Um, in general, so I do a lot of my work at night. And I'm talking about like some people work nine to fives, like corporate nine to fives. Well, I work the other side of a nine to five where I'm working from 9 p.m. to like five, six, seven o'clock in the morning. And then sometimes I'll get like three or four hours of sleep before I dive into the day once Nick has to leave for work. Actually, even earlier now that I have to take Aria to school. So, um, this year I really want to try to put a priority on sleep and getting at least seven hours of sleep, which is like, a real stretch for me and so basically rising and really shining is my goal for 2020 keeping it real simple and like really using uh sleep as an area of focus for myself and just <coughs> excuse me trying to um, make sure that I'm not only taking care of my mental wellness and my physical wellness, but in recognizing that sleep is really important for both of those things. I read this article in Oprah magazine about like all the benefits <coughs> of sleep and some of the ways that not getting sleep can be detrimental to your health. And it's crazy. Like one of those things is getting like, um, like, uh, dry patches on your skin. And I've actually noticed that, I don't know if you guys can see this, but like, you probably can't see it. But I've been getting like weird things on my hand. I need to go see a dermatologist. But I'm pretty sure that it that's what it what it is. Like just from getting lack of sleep and dryness and stuff. So um <laughs> that was just one of the things. And some of the other stuff was really crazy. I don't want to dwell on it because that's not my portion, but I do recognize I need to get more sleep. Um so waking up with more energy, feeling refreshed, going to church, having the wisdom of Sundays, but really just focusing on prayer and meditation in the morning because I hadn't been doing that. Um, prior to 2019, but nice, <coughs> you right, babe? but last year I started doing it more and it made such a difference. Like in just having that, you want to get some water? Okay. And just having that mental space in the morning where I feel like I'm surrendering to something and someone bigger than me and really just asking for guidance throughout the day has been a game changer. So here I have, um, finding your spiritual workout. Start your day right, asking what's the one question you most want an answer to. Morning prayer is working wonders, and faith has profound results. So um, these are things I really want to focus on for this year, a continuation of things I started last year. <coughs> and heading over to physical wellness, because my physical wellness last year... I think you should drink water. Cover your mouth. My physical wellness last year got like really good. I had a goal last year of getting back to my pre-pregnancy weight and um, really just like toning up, but also just losing a lot of the baby fat, not because of like the fact that I didn't like my body. I just, I didn't like the way I felt in the body that I had prior to last year. So I took some measures to get my health and wellness in check and I started running again, which was something that I hadn't seen um, as a possibility. Like I just felt like it was so far-fetched um, for me at that point, but to God be the glory, um, I am back to being a runner. And now I run often, like at least three to five days a week. And I am really determined to do a half marathon this year. Last year I said it, um, but I also wasn't trying to pay for it. Uh, but this year I really have a goal of doing the Brooklyn half. So if you guys are interested in joining, definitely sign up for my newsletter because I really want to put together 
um, a little group of mommy runners or just people who want to get down. I know that there are a couple of us out there. So um, if you guys are interested, let me know. But I definitely want to get back to running. But in addition to this, I want to make sure that I'm not limiting myself in the ways that I see potential workouts. Because in my mind, it's best when it's outdoors. But there are also a lot of really great ways to work out indoors. So I have something about the after work. Um, what did I say? Oh, tears to the after hours athlete. I have a whole boxing bag downstairs along with jump ropes and, and weights and stuff like that. So I'm going to concentrate more on home workouts and really just making <coughs> the most of the time and the space that I have to keep in line with the goals that I have as far as my physical wellness. Um, other things are like loving the lines that I have. Um, so full disclosure... I mean, like, I love my body. The things are getting back to normal. I do have, like, a little, little, little saggy skin um, from the pregnancies and losing weight. And so really just, um, not that I don't appreciate those things, but really just loving up on myself as I am. Um, so that is part of that. Getting gorgeous skin, drinking more water so that I can stay hydrated because, you know, black don't crack and I'd like to keep it that way. Um, and uh, finding a therapist um, because... We all need somebody to talk to, and I want one that looks like me and understands my situation. So um, finding an African-American therapist is something that's on my list of things to do this year. Um, yeah, I want to get lighter, tighter, and stronger. That's basically it. And I want to preach joy, really savoring the moments, breathing, tasting, seeing, feeling, and, um, you know, just recognizing and continuing to recognize the power of magical thinking and how you can manifest and create the life that you want. Right? Right. All right. On to the, oh, on to my uh, family relationships. Jace, you want to check this out too? Yeah, check it out. Yeah, that is daddy. Okay, wait, you blocking the camera, son. Over here. Over here. Jace. Over here. Y'all are all up in my grill. You're blocking the light. You're blocking the light. All right. So now I'm... Jake, seriously? You're just going to follow the camera? Excuse me. Sit over here, babe. Ooh, sweet. All right. So in talking about the family life, um, as far as our relationship, my relationship with uh, my husband, basically just continuing to be friends you know like we've been together now this month it'll be 13 years um and we've been married for four so um just continue daddy. yes it is daddy can you move over a little bit please daddy. yes Okay, just continuing our journey as friends and getting to know each other, um, continuing to know each other, because even though you've been together for a while, you never stop learning your partner as you never stop learning yourself. Please stop throwing things. That is not nice. Um, so in order to do that, just being uh, honest. Yes. Oh, my gosh. This is why I do things. You want cereal? Okay. One moment, guys. I'm gonna get these kids some cereal. So I turn it off. I'm back. Sorry. So, um, mom life, right? This is what happens when you. Jeez. Right here, buddy. Daddy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is daddy. So again, this year I chose to use more pictures of my actual family and my actual life versus cutting things out from the magazines, aside from words, and um. So, again, I chose moments that I really loved that we had last year or just, um, I don't know, more things that I wanted to create. So, let, um, this year my focus is on uh, honesty and having conversations that sometimes we may not want to have, but just recognizing how um, in doing so you end up so much stronger on the other side. Not that I don't, Jeez, oh my gosh, you're like all up in my space. Here, come sit over here and watch Super Y. You want me to turn it off? Huh? Sit down and watch Super Y, okay? Thank you. Uh, so in recognizing that um, we need to have conversations, we need to continue to talk because communication is like really the key to anything and everything and every relationship that you really want to have if you want to have a successful one. <laughs> So just continuing to speak as friends um, and honesty. 
and keep creating and continuing to create uh, cute moments together. Um, and the keys to having those things happen. Oh my gosh, Jace. <laughs> get your butt out of the camera. And get away from my coffee. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh my gosh. Pick it up. Pick it all up. <laughs> so, um, in thinking about the kids this year and the relationship I want to have with them, last year I think the theme was, uh, what was it? What did it say verbatim? Instead of wondering when your next family vacation is, set up a lifestyle that you don't need to escape from. Well, we definitely did that in creating 52 wonderful memories together, um, me and the kids. And this year, I really just want to focus on, like, appreciating the little luxury of time spent together in extreme fun um, and memories made with love. So I put together these images of us as a family um, and things that I would love for us to do, like taking a family road trip. Nick and I um, love road trips. We, we've taken one basically the last five years, like from New Jersey down to Florida. Um, and we even took one recently down to North Carolina. And we drove over 1,500 miles together in less than uh, in less than a week. So it was really nice and really fun. And we want to do more of those things. And I'd love to do them with the kids. Although maybe they're too young for it. I don't know. But I definitely want to take road trips. In any case, also um, more beach days. Because last year, I think we only did two beach days with the kids. Maybe even one. But um, the beach is my happy place. And I, if I could be on a beach every day, I would. So just enjoying more times that are sure to please. Get it? Sure to please. No! Why are you in... Why do you insist on putting crayons in my coffee? Go sit down. Yeah, no. Um, he wants to put crayons in my coffee. <sighs> anyway, um, holiday cheer, uh, spending more time with my family or communicating with them more often, and that means my siblings as well, um, is something that I really want to do this year. And just basically imagining the possibility of life's little luxuries. Jace, your behind is all up in this camera. Okay? Thank you. Um, there are a couple of other things, but I'm really just trying to wrap this up so these kids can go. So this is an important one. Um, a day in the life of the magical mom. Um, this year, I really want to focus on work-life balance because, um, like I said, I stay up till 6 o'clock in the morning trying to work on things when really there are probably better ways of doing things during the day. So I really want to make sure that I'm doing that while also engaging with our kids. I try to make sure that the kids are a part of everything that I do in the as much as possible especially as it relates to the type of work that I'm creating and also um, making sure that we are keeping uh, in tune or aligned with what their gifts and talents may be as it relates to the things that we're doing so um, yeah I really would love to have more work-life balance so um, in doing that I also want to be the change that my daughter can wait what I want to be the change. Oh, so my daughter can accomplish more because I existed. But I don't just want that for my daughter. I want that for both of my children and any other children that may come up. So um, in order to do that, you got to be that. You got to live that. So I'm going to get that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try at least. <laughs> uh, yeah. And there are a bunch of things about self-care that are here, here, and throughout. But basically, that is it. Um, so here's the part that I always get most excited about. Um, this is the section I get really excited about because it's basically all me. So, um, over here I basically have my big goals and aspirations as far as like just what I'd like to, the vision to be. And for me this year, um, it's more travel and more getting out. For the past four years since I've become a mom and since I've been staying at home with the children, a lot of attention has been put on them. I mean, as well as myself, because I've also been uh, growing as a person and as an individual. But now I'm in this space where since I have a better understanding of myself and my purpose now that I am a mom, I really want to explore that out in the world. Many of you may not know, but I um, studied international business in college. I majored in it <coughs> as well as Spanish. <clears throat> and I speak fluent Spanish. I've been studying it since I was... Oh, 10. So um, 
Culture, world culture, travel has always been really important to me. I also picked up French when I was 13 and I studied that for four years and could speak it fluently as well. Now, not so much, but I can still understand it and read it a little bit. Um, so I really want to get back into that part of myself and really just like seeing all of the world that the Lord has created, like engaging with the people in the different places, um, tasting the food, seeing the sights, smelling the thing, like basically just experiencing the world. And my brothers and sisters that are out there, you know, all over this beautiful globe. So I want to travel more. And this year I have a goal of at least four different trips. Like, I don't know exactly what they'll look like, but in my mind, in my heart, the goal is four. Um, there's a full breakdown on my list of goals and what my full vision is. But as far as the pictures, this is it. Um, what are you dreaming of doing? And for me, in order to accomplish most of those things and make sure that I'm working in um, alignment with who I am and the way that I operate... Um, this year needs to be the year of making uh, the tiny resolutions because I always have the big picture vision uh, and sometimes it's really hard for me to break it down so that I can make sure that I'm not just um, seeing things from the big scope but really making sure that I'm accomplishing all the little things that need to be done in order to make the big thing happen. So I need to keep to the tiny resolutions and keeping an integrity with myself, my word, and um, really just making sure that I'm getting things done. Which I usually get things done, but I need to get the little things done too. Paying attention to those or you nasty Jace. Or uh building the team that here at the Liveridge Movement so that we can make sure that those things are getting done and getting done in excellence. And now that we have a clear vision as to what that is, um in a lot of ways, it's easier to do that because I know exactly who I need and what skills they need to have and the type of personalities as well as other things. Who's this? Hey, girl, Lillian! Say hi to Auntie Lillian. There you go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, getting out and enjoying is a big part of my 2020 vision. Going small continues to be a theme of this year because if y'all have been following me, y'all know I want a tiny house. I want one so bad. <laughs> I'm trying to get Nick on board. We'll see what happens in the future. But I really, really want a tiny house. Um, or at least like a tiny studio space. That's just for me. I w what I really want to do is convert a school bus. I want a school, y'all. I want to turn a school bus into a creative workspace and an office space. But we'll see what happens in the year to come. But in, in just doing that and preparing, um, I want to continue to get rid of stuff. I've been doing so much purging over the past two years. And it's been proving to be really fruitful and just like allowing myself mental freedom and space to create while also just getting rid of stuff that we just don't need. Like we're always holding on to stuff. Uh, let's talk. Oh, yes. Okay. Container house. Yes. I want, oh my goodness. So school buses, container homes, all that stuff. I'm just into tiny house living. Okay. Um, so going small continues to be a part of my theme for this year and just releasing stuff so that I can have space and mental freedom and, um, just the liberty to create without feeling bound to like places and things. Cause we don't need stuff. What I want is experiences. And you get that when you have less. Um, Oh, ooh, I'm going to follow her. Okay, I have this sideways. So I'm like, what's happening? Um, so I really want to plant this year. <laughs> I know it seems like something that's so little, but when you have kids that are constantly eating dirt, um, it's a really big deal. <laughs> so I have these beautiful plants. I want these, like the ones with the big, beautiful leaves. I want it right here in the corner to clean the air, but also make the house more like pretty and like live and green i want all of those things um maybe even a couple of succulents i'm trying to think of where we can like put them around here where the kids won't get to them and try to make them a snack um or rip them up because that's also a thing that they do so i want to get a plant i really want to go to essence festival this year i really not even just going to essence festival i really want to collaborate with essence because i love essence because um i love everything that they stand for and just like promoting and uh sharing the black experience as a woman and um really just like speaking for black women you know they call it black girl magic headquarters in a lot of ways that is exactly what they are so um 
in recognizing what my purpose is and recognizing my ability to speak and my, my responsibility as a storyteller and also my um, love for people just like living their best lives, but especially women speaking about what they want, living in alignment with what they want and who they want who they want to be, where they want to be, and all the other things. Um, but especially black women, because I feel like we do not speak enough, and I feel like we don't tap into our gifts and our joy and all of those other things enough. For me, as a storyteller and creative, I want to like create content. I want to speak with women. I want to share and engage with women that are like me so that we can share our stories and create healing. So my thing for my business um, in a lot of the ways is in brewing up a business, there's what you do, then there's why you do it. And for me, that is black women supporting black women supporting black women. Okay, I don't... <laughs> I mean, yeah. women in general, but especially black women. And if you are someone who may not be a minority, but you have women who may look different from you as your friends, just having that understanding of who they are, where they may be coming from, and um, really how you can support and what may be happening in their lives or supporting and sharing their stories or just having a better understanding of who they are. So as you guys may or may not know, I have a podcast called The Live Rich Movement with Erica Lasan, and last year was my first year podcasting and I started off with four episodes. I took a break in the podcast because, hey, yay one day. <laughs> I, start, I took a break with the podcast because I was really trying to gain concise clarity about everything that I was trying to do because you guys know that I'm a digital creative. So I do a lot. Like I have the podcast, I had the blog, I have uh, my YouTube channel and like doing video production and hosting for other people. Then I started with t-shirts and then I've been making jewelry for over 20 something years. So in all of those things, just trying to figure out, well, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish with all of it? Because all of it, sir, <coughs> excuse me. Because all of this serves a purpose, and I have a reason for doing all of it, but just trying to find a way to make sure that they are all aligned, but also recognizing how they all serve others, like how they serve my audience, how they serve the people that I want to reach. And so that is where my title as an alignment and empowerment strategist came from, because in taking inventory of all of the things that I do do and all of the things that I could do, I realized that ultimately I just wanted to help people in all of the ways that I do those things. And I recognize that I can help people. Jays, I recognize that I can help people in a lot of ways. Um, so there's not just one part of anything that I've done over the years that will help people more or less. Okay, I need to wrap this up because they're like getting really. I'm turning off the TV. Sit down. You aren't even watching it. Uh, so in considering all of this, um, I realized that I could help women create content. I recognize that I could have conversations that share their experiences. I recognize that I could help them record things, create stories, or really just tap into their happy, healthy, happiest, healthiest, purpose-filled lives. That's the reason why I created all of my info products that you guys see linked in the bio, like my happy happiness challenge like the Vision Casting Living in Purpose on Purpose course, like the class that I have coming up in February called Heart of the Matter, Content Creation for Newbies, and women just trying to share their stories and really just also recognizing the power of their stories and their experiences. Um, and there are other things. So I say all that to say we're going to be doing a lot in 2020, okay? But what we gained in 2019 in the year of sur surrender more than anything, was clarity for going into 2020 and this next decade, which I'm so excited about. Um, what else do I have on here? So with the podcast experience, I have uh, Shattering the Silence, because I feel like a lot of times as black women, we really don't speak about our experiences because we don't want to offend people. We don't want to step on toes. We don't want people all up in our business. We don't want to be judged, even though most of the time a lot of us are going through the same things. You know, like there's a lot that goes into it, the experience of women in general, but especially, again, as black women. So in addition to um, talking about shattering the silence, because I'm going to finish up this season of the Live Rich Movement, and I got some bomb interviews coming up, so you guys definitely want to stay tuned um, on that. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter. I also... 
have a whole bunch of black girl magic and inspiration down here. Like some of my absolute, absolute, absolute favorite people in the industry and um, just in person. Can you wait like a couple minutes? I'm almost done. Okay. So uh, Yvonne Orji, love her. She's my Nigel sis, even though she don't know it yet. Um, but she grew up in Maryland and she's Nigerian and she has just like catapulted into the space that she's always envisioned for herself. But what I love most is that she did it with Jesus as a homeboy. <laughs> um, but she's just really like climbed into this level of success where she... She always saw it for herself, but she didn't know how it was going to happen. And I really, really love that because she stayed true to who she was and what she wanted to create. And now she has all these amazing things happening. If you guys don't know, definitely follow her. But her, um, <gasps> Freddie Harrell, oh my goodness, my sis from overseas. Uh, <laughs> she's doing amazing things. Daddy? And um, we Daddy? have this like love affair Daddy? that we started online. And we finally got to meet... Was it last year or the year before last year? I can't remember. Oh. But basic, thank you, babe. Excuse me. Daddy, but basically, Daddy. she's moved to Mommy. New York now, and she's building Mommy. business. Yeah, that's Daddy's laptop. So she's a part of my inspo. Then there's Tracy Ellis Ross, which I mean, she needs no explaining. I just love her. Um, Amanda Seals because she's a multi passionate as well, and she has just like taken her creativity to the next level. Now she's a co host on. <coughs> The real, in addition to last year, she um, started a podcast. Now she has a book. Like, she's just doing so many amazing things with her creativity in her life that I really admire. And it's also just very inspiring to me as a multi passionate and knowing and recognizing that all things are possible. And you also don't have to, like, like, you don't have to negate any part of yourself to get to where you want to go. Like, Amanda is somebody who is so authentically vulnerable and, and, and someone who doesn't not speak her truth for anybody so i really appreciate that and um i love her for it then there's uh Mozama st john who is a corporate executive that's a boss and a mom and she is really putting Af well she she's I don't want to say she's putting Africa on the map, but I love what she's doing in bringing Africa to the masses and people who may not have um, really considered going to the continent before. So I, I love and admire that. Then there's Auntie Oprah. Oh my goodness, I love Oprah. I have been obsessed with Oprah since I was a child. I used to watch the Oprah Winfrey show as a child. When I was younger, I remember in elementary school, there was this um, like school play that we did where you got to tap into, you had to channel the person that you admire most. I was in third grade. I wanted to be Oprah. I got to interview Michael Jackson. There was a kid in my class who was Michael Jackson. So I sat down and I interviewed him. Like, I love Oprah. She's part of the reason why I believe I came into this. Um, who's in the bathroom? Jace? Hold on. I got to make sure someone's not drinking toilet water. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> um, she's part of the reason why I, I feel like I have always wanted to um, just like engage with people and speak with people because we never know how powerful our voices are unless we utilize them. And she's somebody who helped me recognize that very early. So she's always been an inspiration and continues to be an inspiration. Um, Ava DuVernay, need I say more, okay? Her storytelling abilities and her voice and, and her vision as a director, as a creative, and also just as someone who has like, lived through many careers and is now like in embracing who she fully is and what she wanted to do and really just taking that pivot in her life has gone on to create amazing art, but not only that, open uh, way, the way for conversations to be had that really share the black experience in an engaging and, and true way. So um, I really admire her. That's why she's on here. Lena Waithe, same thing. Love her. Love her storytelling. It's such an inspiration. And then, um, yeah, like, there's so many other things on here. Um, knowing what defines you brings you uh, closer to bringing, being your most powerful, a quote from Auntie Oprah. And this is really where my vision comes in. I want everyone to feel that they're worth standing up for and that there's good in our world. Basically, I want people to experience joy in their life, wholly and truly. Doing what they love, um, doing what they want to do versus what they think they have to do, and also just utilizing their gifts and talents to really just like leave a, I don't want to say leave a mark on the world because some people like that's not their thing, but I want everyone in, in this life to recognize that they have purpose, you know, like 
maybe it won't be something that like I don't actually know that's not true because even if like the smallest things if you're able to touch one person you don't realize how impactful that can be in the grand scheme of that person's life and how they interact with other people everybody has a purpose everybody has a voice everybody has the power to touch move and inspire in some way shape or form so it is our duty to every day make sure that we are living in whatever that purpose is some people don't know what the purpose is some people need help finding it that is where i come in as an alignment and empowerment uh, strategist but also and just like recognizing that like you're you're not here to be a way to waste of space Nobody is supposed to be a waste of space. And some people feel like a waste of space, but they're not. And that's because they yet haven't yet found their purpose. I want everybody to live in their purpose and know that they're worth standing up for and that there's good in the world and that they can also create that good. So um, that's a key thing for me. And ultimately, this leads me to the last thing. What we are all actually seeking is the truest expression of ourselves. Again, purpose. I want everybody to live passionately in purpose and faith and really just living happy, happy, healthy, purpose-filled lives. That's my purpose here. Um, so again, in thinking about black women supporting black women, supporting black women, um, I would love to create an environment for women to get healthy, whether that's a weight loss, whether that's a toning, whatever the case is, and just feeling good in their things, um, the life and the body that they have. Support groups in some ways, whether that be on in online communities, in person, however that comes into fruition this year. Uh, community health and just new vitality. Like, I want all of us to feel brand new, rejuvenated, happy, joyful, um, purposed, and all of the other good things. Um, and in recognizing that I would like to do these things, I also recognize that you cannot give if you are depleted. So this year, in addition to focusing on getting sleep, I also really want to put more of a, an effort into my self-care. Though last year was a really great year for self-care, I really want to turn it up this year. Because self-care is prioritizing your needs and giving yourself the time and attention you deserve. For me, as a stay-at-home mom, that means finding more alone time. Can you guys see that? Finding more alone time that doesn't necessarily have to be 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Like, because also then the only time I have by myself, I'm like working. That's not healthy either. So, um, yeah, really just growing up, stepping out. I want to set the ambiance with some candles and some other things. Um, and as women, we tend to say yes more than we say no. And that drags us down. So ask me for what we want. Is something that I think we all need to do more. I want to read more. Can you guys see this? I want to read more because I feel like when I do have free time, what you guys have bananas already. I'm almost done, but we're gonna eat soon. It's almost five thirty. I'm lying. It's only four. Um, so yeah, basically, I just want us all to ask for what we want more and live in our joy, live in our purpose, and other things. I want to read more. Excuse me. Uh -huh. Um, in my free time because I used to read a whole 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 lot more but now I feel like I don't have the time for it I need to make time for it and guys I think that that concludes my evaluation of my 2020 goals there's so much more and I'm sure that you'll be hearing more about it throughout the year but um, with that said I would love to hear about what some of your goals are this year some of the things that Aria can you please stop stop you're definitely not getting a banana you're definitely not getting a banana now because you're being rude. So I'd like to hear some of what your goals are for this year, some of the ways in which you plan on tapping into your purpose, um, and how you guys want to live. Excuse me. Um, how you guys plan. Here, you can look at it over here. All right. And me. Yes, and you. How you guys plan on. Thank you, Yolanda. <laughs> How you guys plan on tapping into your happiest, healthiest, purpose-filled lives um, in 2020 and beyond? What are some goals that you guys have? What are some plans that you have in place to achieve them? If you guys need any help tapping into that and you're... Okay, actually, as a matter of fact, y'all are done. I can bring this up now. If you guys need any help tapping into your purpose, your health, your joy, um, and all of those things, make sure you head on over to... Here, mix it for me slowly. Don't make a mess. Don't drink it either. Make sure you guys head on over to ericalassan.com or you can click the link in my bio to take my happiness challenge to um, tap into your happiest, healthiest Jays. He, he finally succeeded in putting the crayon in my coffee. That's disgusting. I'm so mad. Um, 
Uh-huh. <laughs> and tapping into your happiest, healthiest, purpose-filled life. Um, just an hour of doing this exercise, and there are interactive worksheets, there are videos involved, will help you intentionally tap into your joy on a daily basis. And then, like I mentioned, in addition to that, we have some other things coming up for this year in the Live Rich Movement. For those of you who are interested in that, I have the content creation for newbies, Heart of the Matter, coming up next month. Make sure you guys sign up to the newsletter that's also linked in my bio so you can be kept up to date with those things and all the other amazing things that we have coming up this year. I think I've talked enough. My mouth is getting kind of dry. Now I can't drink my coffee because there's a crayon in it. So I'm going to go get some water. But until then, I look forward to seeing you guys more in 2020 and beyond. We're going to be doing more of these live chats. I thoroughly enjoy them and seeing your faces pop up here. But until the next time, live rich and happy dream chasing. Bye. Oh, wait. I forgot. There's something else. Hi, Mikaela. I know, right? They're a mess. Look, look at what they do when I am not paying attention. Y'all see all this mess? That was not here before I started talking, but they know how to take advantage of the situation. Um, for all of you who liked this vision board, bam! I had I just wrapped up. Yes, I just wrapped up a four-week course um, called Vision Casting, Living in Purpose on Purpose, where I actually spoke with people about how to tap into their purposes and their passions, and I also taught them how to make that vision board. <clears throat> if you are interested in signing up for the course, it is currently closed, but we will be doing four a year. The next one opens up in April, so again, make sure you sign up to the newsletter so that you're kept up to date with that. But if you don't want to take the four-week course, but you just want to learn how to make the um, vision board and you want to tap into uh, a part of your passion and like how to start navigating that, I also have something linked in my bio called Crafting Vision in Seven Steps or Less that teaches you how to do exactly that. So um, head on over, get your visions popping, and I'll see you guys later. Live rich and happy dream chasing. I want to say one Bye. Too. You want to say it too? Okay. Listen, happy Bye. <laughs> this is why it's a faith fueled Friday topic. Excuse you. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. She decided she wants to turn up the volume like I'm loud or something. Um, <laughs> so the reason why this year's theme is by faith is because last year a lot happened with surrendering. Oh, so let me break it down for y'all. Hebrews 11, right? 11.1 1 is a verse that I came into last year. And then I was so intrigued by it that I read the rest of the chapter. And basically the entire chapter talks about faith. And faith is the assurance of things that we do not see as fact. Like the assurance. Do y'all recognize the breakdown of the word assurance? Like you're sure that these things are going to happen even though there's absolutely no evidence that it should happen. That is the way that I am choosing to live this year. Everything by faith. The places that I want to go, by faith. The people that I want to meet, by faith. The things I want to do, by faith. The, the work I wish to create, by faith, um, is really what I'm leading with. And uh, it's just been crazy the way that that message just keeps coming up um, over and over and over for me. So in thinking about what I really wanted my theme for this year to be, and how I wanted to really carry myself this year. Last year it was surrendering and like magic happened basically last year in, in really allowing myself to surrender. Um, this year it's like, well shoot, if surrender works, what can faith do? What do you guys think faith can do? Right? Okay, right, thank you. Like, and, and just recognizing that we have the ability to manifest and create what it is that we want. All it really takes is us speaking what it is that we want. And I choose to do those things in faith. So I'm praying on them, um, but also praying that um, in, in, in releasing those things, because I'm still like surrendering, though having utilized and kind of like learning the art of surrender, thanks to last year, um, in exercising my faith this year, I recognize that once you surrender and once you basically see things as done, even though there's no evidence that it will happen, um, you kind of just let it be what it's going to be. And a lot of the times when it happens, it happens in the ways that you don't expect. And being that I'm a believer, Last year, the things happened in ways that I never expected, but were so much better than I could have ever planned. Girl, you know what you want to know what I'm reading? I'm reading the Bible. <laughs> 
that's what I've been reading. And is it? Oh, and also um, devotions. I've gotten new devotionals. Last year it was Jesus Calling. Mommy, this year it is uh, the Joy of Jesus or something. I will share it. Actually, it's on my feed somewhere, but I'll send it to you. Um, but in recognizing that. You can have a banana once I'm done. I'm almost done, okay? And recognizing that once we surrender those things, we allow God, some people call him the universe. He created the universe, so I guess if you want to call him that too, sure. Uh, but in allowing him to really just take us and use us in our being that he knows us in all of our gifts and all of our talents and all of our like capabilities, um, once we surrender ourselves to his will, he really um, brings us into the places that he needs to be in. Today, after reading my devotions, I shared um, I shared the image from the devotional reading, and it said, actually, let me see if I can find it. Ah! Whenever you feel inadequate for the task ahead, stop and think about your resources. I, your strength, am infinite. I never run out of anything. Like, you don't ever run out of anything. Um, so when you work in collaboration with me, don't set limits on what you expect to accomplish. I will give you what you need to keep moving forward step by step. You may not get to the goal quickly as you'd like, but you will always get there in my perfect timing. And over the past year, that's really just been, um, like, an extremely potent truth for me. Like, things may not be happening in the ways that I want or in the time that I want. Like, I've been at this hustle now for almost... 10 years doing certain things and then like even longer doing other things and things haven't happened the way that I'd expected but they're happening in a way that is necessary and true to who I need to become in order to stay there so I'm really grateful and I wanted to share that for all of y'all looking for things to happen quickly um, just recognize that everything happens as it's supposed to on another note my locks are getting so long y'all I can actually pull them over all right, the kids are getting naughty. I got to go now. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that. Hashtag my face. Don't be surprised if you see it everywhere. <laughs> Deliver to them. Stop.